What's up, everybody? This is Jay, and welcome to Jay Moore Reviews, The Shy, Episode 4 Review. Remember to click that like button, I'm trying to get 50 likes for this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get 10,000 subs. Also, please continue to support me on Patreon and on PayPal. Every little bit helps. Now, let's get into it. When we first check out, we see Booger Beard, and he's shot. He leaking like a runny faucet. He's trying to make it down the street, get to some type of safety. He's moving uh, through the hood. He comes up across a Muslim mosque where these brothers is praying, and uh, he needs somebody to pray for his ass right now because he's about to be a goner. And so uh, as he's moving... Uh, through he's uh sees uh common and common like brother you need some help you want me to pray for him because uh any minute this dude's about to be excommunicado you know what i'm saying but no he don't say nothing he keeps it moving he goes down the street he keeps walking away and common he don't know what to say he don't know what to do and the brothers inside they don't know they just figure well that's just another waterhead nigga shot Meanwhile, it goes to a flashback, and we see that where it left off last episode, when he comes out and he say, we got a problem, little man, and then they flash back and show him shot, and then they flash back and show them talking, and easy is saying, yeah, you killed my brother, and he throw his hands up and say, yeah, but let me explain, and next thing you know, easy tackle him like it was a quarterback sneak gone wrong. And so then next thing you know, it flashed back to current times and we see Easy with uh, Lil Kev and they in the alley and Kev freaking hard talking about his blood on me, his blood on me, help me get it off. And so Easy take his shirt off and try to, you know, soak it in some water, try to wash it off, do whatever he can. They both tweaking. He tell Kevin ride straight home. Then next thing you know, while Kevin gone, he goes into his uh, drawers and pull out the Striz app. And uh, so now he tweaking. He try to take his shirt off and uh, change his damn self. Meanwhile, we see Booger Beard, and he looking like a runaway slave. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the grass, he done passed out. And uh, next thing you know, um, they show that he got the the heart of a uh, of a lion because uh, he keeps going. And so he finally makes it to his grandma's house. And the first thing he tried to do is, of course, put his dirty fingers on the wall, which, you know, you know, grandma going to get in his ass for that. But then he trying to wash his hands. And while he washing his hands, uh, we see Girly Fro and he like, yeah, it hurt, don't it? And next thing you know, Booger Beer pass out, go in the shop. We see Lil Kev looking like little young Chris Rock in the making, Lil Pookie. And uh, he knocking on the window and he asking his sister to let him in. At first she thought it was him trying to get a little nookie. And so she let him in and she like, uh, why should I help you? He like, cuz I could tell mom where you was, but you, I ain't telling. And so she like, look, just you stay behind. And then so she go and start talking to her mom about little tampons and lady talk. And he sneaks on behind uh and runs behind him and makes it to the uh, house. He do a little Euro step past his mama in the, in the, in the uh, bathroom. Now we cut to Easy. He walking down the street trying to play it cool. When next thing you know, the, the popos roll up on him. And so now nah, he's scared. He worried. And uh, the, the popos say, why? We told you to stop. Why you ain't stop? And uh, he ain't had nothing to say. They say, where you coming from? He like, well, and then he tell them the restaurant. that in fact, Officer Pigowski, he say, oh, man, I've been trying to get reservations for that, re that restaurant. And so uh, then he say, well, uh, I can help you with that. And so he reached for the phone and they get a little worried at first. But uh, next thing you know, he let him call and next he gets a reservation by the skin of his teeth. That stops the cops from looking through his stuff and let him go. Meanwhile, we see on the other side of town, grandma, she first, she got to get up and check her sugar, make sure her sugar ain't out of control. Then she getting ready to have her morning glory when the first thing she do is she see booger beard and it look like he done expired like uh, old milk on the floor. And so she get on down, she got to get down on one knee and check and see if he all right and that's my baby oh lord help me jesus and so she dig into her little grocery cart and she get the phone and she start calling for help uh, to see if somebody could come help her boot and so uh when we see in the morning 
uh, Lil Easy get woke up by his girl throwing his bag on top of him, and he like, what's the problem? And next thing you know, she dump out the bag with a little crazy look in her face, talking about why you had this. He like, let me explain. And before he could say anything, she putting her hands all in his face, smacking him, muffing him and everything. For one, what the hell she going through his bag like she his mama? You know, that's an invasion of privacy. And then if you mad enough to kick him out, then you should at least let him explain. Because in the end, you kicked him out and you don't even know what the hell's really going on. And he tried to explain and she didn't want to hear nothing. She just told him, get out, and then she run off crying. Meanwhile, we see uh, Wyclef Jr. over here. And uh, he trying to uh, cut out the school, but his big brother uh, tell him, uh, no, nah, come here, man. You got to get your lining up, right? If you're trying to holler at these uh, young hood mice at school, because they ain't full-grown hood rats yet. And so uh, he stopped to get a line up, and he say, man, you think you was going to get away with stealing my shit? And so he about to threaten them with the clippers, and you know, Shorty think that's going to really, uh, you know, cut them or something, so he's scared. And uh, he say, man, get my stuff back. You going to steal my, steal my gun, and uh, you don't uh, bring it back. So now we know where the gang, gun came from. Meanwhile, Grandma called her nurse to come help. And so when the nurse come here, she see uh, Booger Beard laid out on the floor. And she like, oh, man, you need to call the, uh, call the uh, ambulance. Ain't nothing I can do. She like, no, they going to put them in jail. And, uh, you know, and then I don't want them to go to jail. They ain't going to help nothing. And so she beg her, uh, boys is all we got. Please help. And so she knows she got a crazy son, her damn self, so she falls for it and start to help. Meanwhile, we see Easy, he looking for a place to stay now. He goes over to his mama house. And so when he come in, we see uh, the heavyweight champ. He been painting the rooms and stuff. And so uh, he asked, could he stay for a second? And they all like, uh-huh, old girl kicked him out. And now he trying to text her, saying if they can have some time to talk. And the meanwhile, he gonna take out his bloody, bloody shirt. And he tried to put the gun under the bed. And then uh, heavyweight simp, heavyweight simp of the world come through. And uh, before he, he could put everything up, he got to stash it back. But uh, heavyweight simp saw where the, uh, the bloody... Uh, the bloody shirt and he kind of lightweight saw him a little messing with something under the bed but he kept it kept it on the low and so he talking about that damn uh weak paint that he put on there talking about you like that paint that's a good paint and he like oh yeah whatever and so while he about to leave uh mama say you when you coming back i'm gonna make uh pork chops you want that he like yeah that's cool and he like no nah, we ain't having pork chops we having spaghetti she like, why you do that? We can't let him get too comfortable, uh, cause he jealous of him and pretty much. And so, meanwhile, we see little Kev and uh, his boy, and they ask him where the gun at. And he like, man, I ain't got it, but I get back. He like, man, my brother tripping. We need it. And then while they talking, they get interrupted by the flock of hood mice, a little pack of hood mice, and they say, hey, what's up? My parents gonna be gone. Um, we gonna have a little party at my house. Why don't you come through? So they like, all right. So meanwhile, Kev hook up with Lil Easy, and he like, yo, what's up, man? You still got that? And he like, uh, no, nah, I ain't got it on me, but I can get it. He like, yeah, man, because that ain't mine, and they want it back. So now he going to go get it and meet him up with him later. Meanwhile, we cut to Booger Beard, and we see right now that uh, he uh, laid up leaking, and uh, she trying to talk to him, and he asking Hey, could you give me some type of pain medicine or something? She like, like this? And then uh, he like, yeah. And then next thing you know, she pop it in her own damn mouth. He like, oh, man. She like, why don't you take some Tylenol? And by the way, I was never here. And Grandma say, he ain't no snitch. That's my boy. Meanwhile, we see... Kev and the crew, and they go into the house party, and then there's all the hood mice in, they standing around talking, and then she say, so what's up, what did you bring, he like, bring, she like, when you come to a party, you're supposed to bring something, and so Papa, to the rescue, he come out with a big bag of snacks, cause you know, he's shaped like a big vending machine any damn way, and uh, he pull out a bag of snacks of the Jay's barbecue potato chips, which was his breakfast, and uh, he like, y'all welcome, and uh, they was some Surprise, I don't know why they should have known. He probably got Twinkies, Ho Ho's, chips, a couple little uh, 
bologna fry, bologna sandwiches, everything up in that piece. So they get into the party and they starting to complain because it's just like a regular kids party where everybody's standing, hugging the wall, girls talking with each other. And he like, they like, let's go. Papa like, man, do I got to do everything? So he goes and turns on the music. Next thing you know, he start doing the two-step, looking like a little young heavy D here. And uh, he start busting it out, doing a little dab. He started working up a sweat. He's working up a little lather, looking like a little little turkey gravy. He working up around his throat, around his neck. And the next thing you know, Heavy D, he looking like instead of Heavy D, he's starting to look like a little Chub Rock over here. He got the party rocking. And then everybody start falling behind. They start dabbing with him. He got everybody behind following him. Little, looking like a little drum major, more like a drum stick. And so uh, he got the party jumping now. Meanwhile, little Easy, he uh, goes over there to go get the strap for a little cab. And now he see under the bed, it's gone. And uh, so now he goes and he goes to talk to uh, the uh, heavyweight simp, uh, Porridge Foreman. Because uh, he talking about uh, he over there eating a little cup of porridge. Uh, you know, some yogurt. And he like, hey man, I had some uh, some personal stuff missing. He like personal stuff. I ain't even know you had personal space. And uh, he like, man, uh, yeah, my personal stuff missing. He like, could you get me a spoon? And next thing you know, he smacked that cup out of his hand. And then that's when uh, the heavyweight simp got mad. Porridge Foreman wasn't trying to play that. Uh, that's the overweight champion of the house. And so uh, they step up, and he like, boy, I done got rid of that gun. Don't you bring no gun in my house. He like your house he like yeah this is my house don't be bringing no gun in here what's wrong with you and so now he didn't put uh easy in a hell of a situation now meanwhile easy step off and they cut to booger beard and he laid up and grandma asking did you kill somebody and he like no nah. she like well did you see a light did did you see a light he like no nah, i smelled some bleach and so, uh, meanwhile, they cut to Kev, and uh, we see uh, Easy in them, and he's saying, man, I couldn't get it. And uh, now they talking about his brother going to be pissed. So he like, well, let me talk to him. He like, oh, man, we can't do that. And so they like, well, look, we let me talk to him. It's better than nothing. And so uh, now we cut to uh, Panama Jack, and he walking through the alley, and it seemed like everybody want to be friends with little Snoop Doggy Dog in the alley. And so now he feeding them some food, and then he didn't cut the lock and stole Snoop Dogg, and they walking through the hood. Meanwhile, we see uh, Blackbeard, the crooked officer, and he's over here talking to the little dope man, little Nino Brown, uh, young trees. And uh, while they talking, making some arrangements, uh, he sees Panama Jack walking with his dog. He's like, what the hell? And uh, Blackbeard say, hey, man, you need some help with something? He say, no, nah, ain't nothing I can't handle. And so then we cut to, uh, you know, a little easy. And he knocking on the door of uh, old boy, the dope man, little uh, brother. And so uh, he asking, uh, they look on the video. And so they like, man, who the hell are you? He like, um, I'm just trying to talk to you, man. Your brother, he took something of yours, right? And he's like, uh, so what's that got to do? You got it? And so uh, he like, no, I, I had it, but I ain't got it no more. And so he like, so uh, what, what we going to do about that? He like, uh, well... Um, what I could do is, uh, I could try to, uh, pay you for it. Like, uh, you could pay me. He's like, yeah. And so, uh, he started counting his money. And, uh, the next thing you know, all he could count up is 150. And he like, 150? That burner go for twice that on the street. He like, well, I can get you the rest. It's nothing. I got you. And so, uh, he like, uh, well, um, nah. What you can do is you go ahead and uh you keep that you owe me now he like i owe you he like yeah i like when people owe me he like uh what's your credit score he like my credit score he like yeah what's your credit you was you was 750 he like uh i don't know i guess he like yeah we're gonna do it that way we got you owe me now so now he over here running niggas credit credit score and shit uh freecreditreport.com <laughs> up in this piece and so now we cut to uh the girls and they waiting to exhale over here in the kitchen and so they all talking about these men and how they ain't this and how they ain't that and uh she over here jerica sipping on her little sham pipple and uh listening to her uh, girls while they bashing men and then she say well at least jerica you got yours now peeing on the on the toilet seat she like well the other day i found a 
gun and a bloody shirt in his bag. They like, oh, this ghetto ass. She like, so I put him out, girl. Ain't got time for that. So then, meanwhile, we go to young Nino Brown over here, uh, a.k.a. Phony Montana, and uh, he's sitting in the little baby bathtub over here inside the living room with two girls or whatever. He got a little little freaks on the side, blowing shotguns, looking like a little pimp. But then his brother come in. He like, come here, little nigga. And so he like, uh, you know you done messed up, right? And so uh, next thing you know, he say, what we gonna do about that? He send this old thick, beautiful brick house looking like a straight G unit, and he like, damn, and old girl come all in his face like she gonna give him some, and next thing you know, she give him a swift kick to the little baby nuts, bust his little baby nuts right in front of everybody at the party, everybody start laughing, then this little Nino Brown, phony Montana, he hops up out the tub, he butt booty naked, and he's standing in front of his brother like, with his little hang down all in his face and everything, a little bliggity in his mouth in front of the party, ain't nobody worried about a damn thing, the dude, uh, he, 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 straight OG, say, you cry like a bitch, I'ma beat you like one, and so, uh, shorty hold it together, them baby nuts, they didn't crack, and so, uh, he get back in the tub, and, uh, old girl get to back and rubbing his neck and everything, meanwhile, we see young Cruiser, and he's tweaking because, uh, Blackbeard was sweating him about if he told, uh, too much information to, uh, Boog Knight, Boogabeer, um, and so now he's tweaking, looking for him to make sure he don't run his mouth. And grandma tried to say he ain't there, but he busts in the room anyway. And uh, he just moved her out the way uh, and looking through there. And she like, he ain't here. You need to get out of my house. And he like, well, what is that on the wall? And so he point to his little uh, dirty, bloody Kool-Aid fingertips. Uh, look like some hot Cheetos he ate and rubbed the fingers on the wall. And so now he's looking on the bed. He don't see no blood or nothing, but then he see a dirty pile of sheets and stuff then sure enough it's bloody as if somebody just delivered a uh, baby in that room and then grandma up up shoddy looking like it ain't rambo it's grambo because that's a grandma rambo and she said get up out of my house and so now uh the copper is cruiser uh he like hold up you know you point at an at a officer. She like, yeah, that broke into my house. Now get out. He like, well, if you see Ronnie, tell him. And she said, I ain't telling him shit. Get out of my house. And so uh, he walk up out of there with the quickness. You don't play with Grambo. Meanwhile, we see him walking around looking like the crypt keeper, trying to ease on down the road. And then his boy is like, man, what's up with you, man? Where did you wear my? I wear my sunglasses at at night they say man you better go on old boy looking for you and so he walking down the street looking like night of the living dead zombie apocalypse meanwhile he get to where old boy with haitian jack and the crew is this negro is hanging upside down looking like the dark night literally and uh so then they say man back up off my rug man you dripping blood all on my oriental and so now he's still uh sprung a leak is still leaking and so they say man what happened to you you got stabbed shot you no machete he like i got shot he like did you handle your business he like yeah and he like well here come here man i got something for you and so then they go in there and uh this dude making sandwiches and he go and dig in his dead drawers and pull out a cell phone and hand it to the dark knight and he like oh man what the hell and drop the phone talking about man your damn phone smell like balls now that's nasty and so uh bug knight uh, he picks it up, uh, Booger Beard, that's his son's phone, and so, uh, now we see Lil Easy, and he in the little, uh, the, uh, garden of weeding, cause that's where his boy, his cousin, got a little garden where they end up smoking weed, his garden of weeding, and they ended up talking about, uh, what's going on, and, uh, he talking about, man, I don't feel like talking right now, he like, what you come over if you don't want to talk, and so now he breaking down, uh, how his girl kicked him out, then he flashed back into what really happened because they didn't show who shot booger beard and so uh when the booger beard was laid out leaking uh easy he go and he hurry up and he talking to kev because what they ended up showing is easy got through beating him down that was booger beard dead i mean laid out beat down and so while he was walking away because he knew kev set him up uh booger beard grabbed him from behind and he just turned and shot booger beard uh in the in the in the uh abs and so now he tweaked out scared 
Uh, next thing you know, Easy come back, grab him. They break out running. He grab his little uh, banana loopsy uh, bicycle, and uh, they break out running because he had already confronted him, saying, "Man, why you set me up?" You set me up, and uh, then he was talking about, I was scared, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know, and he, he said he wanted to talk, and so, uh, you know, now, you know, uh, easy, he contemplating about everything that's going on, and how things then got out of control, um, it was pretty tripped out episode, um, I knew something had to be up for him to get shot because Booger, Booger Beard didn't have a gun no more. He sold it, and Easy never bought the gun. So uh, that only left little Chris Rock to go and uh, get the gun, and uh, he ended up shooting him. In the end, uh, it was a pretty crazy episode, and uh, it was it was pretty good. This show is turning out to be a good show. Um, if you ain't checked it out yet, um, this is a definitely seemed to be a, a good one to check out. Um, and then thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers um, that'll help me out in my YouTube journey um, into uh, becoming a better channel so I appreciate it also uh, don't forget to click that like button I'm trying to get at least 50 likes for this video and uh, please continue to support me on paypal and patreon.com um, every little bit helps um, and uh and then check out some of these other videos I made. I got some oldies but goodies, some new things, some things you missed. And uh, you all take care. Thanks for watching. Peace.